Michigan, better known for the automobile and Motown music, surprisingly has a rich history in the amusement park industry. Mostly comprised during the 20th century, more than 30 amusement parks have come and gone. Today, we're taking a trip to East Grand Rapids off the shores of Reed's Lake. Ramona Park, once dubbed the amusement mecca of Western Michigan. I guess everybody thinks they're Indiana Jones. This is Ghoster Coasters, and you are about to embark on our history series of forgotten parks of Michigan. Opening in 1897, the park was a picnic and entertainment getaway. Benjamin Hanchett, president and general manager of the Grand Rapids Street Railway Company, was an important developer of Ramona Park early on, and the park flourished under his development, leading to many memories for years to come. Entertainment goers from the Grand Rapids area were treated to many events over the years. One of the most exciting was in 1903, when the professional leaguers from the MLB, the Detroit Tigers, hosted a game on the grounds. The 6-5 win put the Tigers in the tie for the first in the American League. From left field to right, Sam Crawford, Jimmy Barnett, and Billy Lush, John Deering on the mound, Charlie Carr on first, Jamie Highsmith on second, Joe Yeager on third, and Sport McAllister catching behind the plate. They took on the Washington Senators in front of 3,500 to 4,000 fans. It only cost 50 cents to enter Ramona Park, 50 cents for seats in the stands, and another dollar for seats behind home plate. Ramona Park had more games on July 7, 1909, the first professional baseball game under the lights between the Grand Rapids, Bill Bobs, and Zanesville. It was played while the late great Babe Ruth also played a game in Ramona Park in 1923 when the Yankees played the Grand Rapids Bill Bobs. He had two home runs and a 10-year-old future president was in attendance that day as well, Gerald Ford, who also worked at the park back in his heyday. In addition to the many thrilling baseball games of the times, performers at the park included Buster Keaton, the great stone-faced Will Rogers, and Jack Benny, a vaudeville performer, playing violin, one of the leading entertainers of the 20th century, and also included musicians like Cab Calloway, Duke Ellington, and Tommy Dorsey. Aside from the shows, the park had a dance pavilion for those out on the town looking to get down in the state-of-the-art theater. They also had a roller skating rink, which I'm sure was great fun and lively on the evenings. The dance hall was built in 1912, and the Whale by the Round Roof, which was a novelty at the time. Steps away from the beaches of Reed's Lake sat more, the rides. Ramona Park featured merry-go-rounds, lupo planes, arrow swings, flying scooters, and games of chance. One of the more fun rides was Mystic Chutes, an early rendition of the log flume. They also had a roller coaster, which was in a figure eight layout that opened in 1903 following the success of the roller coaster, the Giant Coaster, which was built in 1913, but not much is known about this one. In 1914, John James McAwee brought in Frederick Ingersoll to build the double-tracked Jackrabbit Derby Racer, being one of only two in the country, making this one of the first ever racing roller coasters built. It was also rumored to have an 80-degree drop as well, which seems absurd for the time, and thinking of the restraints, well, sheesh, that was probably a lot of fun. Back to Ingersoll, the creator of the world's first amusement parks chain known as Luna Parks. Ingersoll having built over 277 roller coasters with some of them still operating today. There's a fun fact about the Jackrabbit Derby Racer. It is often referred to by Ingersoll as his finest work and another interesting tidbit about this was nails weren't even used, but instead they bolted pieces together. In addition to all of these great rides, the park also offered a train ride. It carried 30 people or more around the park on a half mile ride. The Harry Gideon family owned and operated the locomotive and it was made to scale. The steam locomotive moved more than 50,000 guests a year in its heyday. They say all good things must come to an end. And while I don't reside with that feeling, I understand that some things do truly come to an end. In 1954, citizens of East Grand Rapids voted to close the park in favor of raising it into building residential apartments and retail stores with shopping centers. Ooh. With passing days fading in the park memories and faint spoils of laughter and joy being all that remains, we take a look at past photos and some retail stores that are still there to show for it. My, what could have been if this park was still here today? 
Big Bertha, an amusement park organ, was built in Paris, France, once operated at Ramona Park, and it now sits entertaining guests at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida at 1900 Park Fair Lane. Miniature Train now resides at Burley Park, which offers a two-mile ride on the tracks through the woods, being the last rideable form of entertainment from Ramona Park left today. Being the first lost and abandoned and forgotten amusement park that we're covering, we enjoyed sharing some of the old memories from Ramona Park and being able to sow the seeds of a past memory that is ever so fading. If you have any family who visited the park, make sure you leave a comment down below. And of course, if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We have plenty of lost, abandoned, and forgotten amusement park content coming throughout the winter, and we hope to cover all of the lost and abandoned, forgotten Michigan amusement parks this year as well. This is Jared. And this is Stacy. From Ghoster Coasters. And we hope that everybody has a good night and all a great fright.